Hello everyone, I'm Inverse and today I'm going to be examining what to look for when trying to learn from replays. Replays are of course one of the best learning tools that Company of Heroes has to offer but you can't really get the most out of them unless you know what to look for and when to look for it. Now there are two types of replays you can be watching if you're trying to improve your play. There are, of course, replays, games of, of your losses, even your wins, you can pick up some tips, but your losses in particular, very helpful. I will not be focusing on your losses this game, that will be in a future video. This video, I am going to be focusing on the second type of replays, which are replays of top players. A lot of the time, newer players and even mid-level players are recommended to watch replay packs, watch replays of higher level players in order to pick up some different styles, pick up some improvements to their play. Most recently watching broadcasts has been very helpful for that, even more so than replays because you get to see what the player is doing on their screen at any given time and how they how they control their army and all that good stuff. This this little series here is going to focus on two games I played against my clanmate Wu. Wu Wu299 is his main account is the number 1 Wehrmacht player in 1v1 and is I believe top 20 24th American player in 1v1. Very very solid player, very good Wehrmacht player as you see from his from his win-loss ratio right here, about seven to one, I'd like to say, maybe a little under seven to one wins to losses. Very, very impressive player, and I'm going to be showcasing two games I played against him very recently. If we open up the first one right now, I am just going to go over a little bit of what I am going to be focusing on in this game. I'm not going to be not going to be pointing out a lot of really small things. This is going to be more for mid-level players, players who know what your opening build is. You know, you kind of have a set style. You know how you like to play, and you're trying to look to a replay and say, what from this player's style, from this player's point of view and the way he plays, what can I gain from it? So that's what I'm going to be doing right here get this game going and I usually speed through the opening sections I mean right now I'm just gonna pause it and note something I normally put I normally put as if as a Wehrmacht player I normally put my Wehrmacht quarters right around here the top left side woo electing to put it on the right hand side this is something I'm going to want to pay attention to just to see what it does it might not necessarily be better it might not be worse but it's different and that's something to keep in mind you want to see what are the benefits of putting the Wehrmacht quarters here as opposed to say over here what are the disadvantages I know right off the bat putting the Wehrmacht quarters here is going to make any pushes to the right hand side of the map far more powerful because he is going to have all his units that have been reinforcing right around here instead of if I put my Wehrmacht quarters over here all of my units are going to be right over here which is going to make holding the left hand side fairly easy but but I mean on on longer the right hand side is is technically the better side at least for a Wehrmacht player it's a lot easier to hold there are the two fuels the one right here and the one right here so that's just something to keep in mind going through this replay right now we're gonna ignore the chat and we're gonna ignore my play because in this case we are going to be focusing on what the Wehrmacht player does we're going to pretend this is a game that doesn't involve me and we're just going to see what we can learn from his style of play. Actually, with that in mind, I'm going to go to his point of view just to make things a little bit easier. Getting a Volk Squad out first. And now this is something interesting as well. We are going to see two Pioneers going over to the right-hand side to cap, not the left-hand side. I personally send one Pioneer to cap over here and another Pioneer to cap over here. So this is going to be something I am going to want to pay attention to and just think and observe what benefits it provides over over my left hand right hand split first volks on the field going to see what he does with that first volks also noticing this pioneer capping this squad right now and the volk squad coming up to support and right now 
this is an extremely crucial moment. You do see he catches my rifle squad out of cover. He is heading toward green cover, so he is already in an extremely dominant position. I have my pioneer, or he has his pioneers capping this plus 10, meaning these pioneers are going to be safe because he is building another Volk squad, which means the second Volk squad is going to hit around here about the same time the second rifle hits. It'll be a bit later just because of the travel distance and the fact that this rifle if I was on the ball, in this case, if the American player was on the ball, would come out a tiny bit earlier. However, keeping in mind, this Pioneer squad down here also going to be completely uncontested. There's no way this rifle squad is going to be able to come down, harass this Pioneer. If this Engineer tries to harass the Pioneer, this Folk squad is going to be able to go over and get it. This Pioneer going to be able to cap probably here, even might be able to harass and even cap this plus 10 munitions point right there. So this is this is what you want to pay attention to when you're thinking what benefits, what trade-offs is Wu going for with this build. In this case, he is getting a far stronger field presence on the left-hand uh, or sorry, on the right-hand side of the map far earlier at the expense of the left-hand side of the map. And then you want to think of as a Wehrmacht player, is that a good thing? Or is it a bad thing? Personally, I would say it's a pretty good thing. Holding the left-hand side from the bottom of longer is extremely difficult. There's a lot of hedges around here, making flanks extremely easy. This building is fairly weak if you put an MG in it, just because rifles can come from any way. They can come from right here, and your MG won't be able to fire on them until they're right beside the building, and that is never a good thing. Whereas on the right-hand side, you have the two fuels, as I mentioned before. You have the two fairly instrumental munitions points that can be contested but if you put up a fairly strong defense will not be contested i personally really like this this little this little tactic wu is employing this little bit of strategic positioning where he sends his two pioneers to the right hand side so this is something i'm going to make a mental note of if not completely adopting for my own play at least thinking, hey, this is something I have in my repertoire, something I can use, throw my opponent off guard, and maybe get a stronger foothold on the right-hand side if my opponent doesn't see it coming. So, getting the replay going a bit more. We see some wire right here. Don't, don't really need to pause for the wire, just to mention that it blocks the rifles from charging in the green cover, and it's always a good thing to put wire around, around hay bales, especially on longer. Now we see... Pushing forward with the Volks fairly heavily. Another rifle squad coming over, so we we're going to back up. Just going to slow it down to one time speed right here. And see a rifle squad flanking around, but that's okay. We're going to focus on Wu, second Volk squad. And right now, Wu is completely happy with his map control, as evidenced by the fact that he's playing extremely passively. You see, he does have two Volks right up here. Going to send one Volks back to deal with a flanking rifle squad. Sending another Volks up here kind of out of cover but that's okay we're looking more for the general idea and looking back to the Wehrmacht quarters we will see a sniper on the way so Wu is doing is very very popular and popular for him this is a build he does I'd say most of the time at least on this map and on maps like Angleville that are fairly open he goes two Volks then a sniper and then an MG this is particularly interesting to me because that is a a build that I find preferable and right now just gonna pause it right now we see a vulnerability in his build as you can see right here the American player has three rifles on the field in fairly advantageous positions you see focus firing this low health Volk squad and the pioneer I mean the sniper has not popped yet this is a very fragile time in this build and it's something you need to keep in mind if you're using it that Right before your sniper is going to hit the field, your opponent is going to outnumber you and can push you off or do severe damage to your manpower if you do not play smartly. I personally think Wu could have played this a, li a little bit better, retreating a little bit earlier. He does not have a static play, and I mean, this is something that that I would be thinking about if I was watching this game to take pointers for how I could improve my two Volks sniper MG opening is to think if my opponent is smart with his rifles and engineers early in the game I would rather retreat 
and save my manpower than fight a battle that I will most likely and almost certainly lose. Now, Wu, I'm sure, knows his sniper is about to pop, is going to hopefully use that to turn the tide. However, rifles just do too much damage, and so that is something I would be keeping in mind, is if he outnumbers me and he plays correctly, get out of there. The, the opening is not static because there are no MGs yet. It's very easy to regain ground. Just something to keep in mind. Gonna get this game going a little bit more. Gonna see this Volk Squad being focused down. Gonna retreat low health. Same with, same with this one. Going to retreat very, very low. And the Sniper does does hit the field just in time to save these two Volk Squads. But that was that's a fairly serious manpower drain. Especially when you really need that third tier one unit that sniper I mean not the sniper the MG I'm sorry in order to make this build effective rifles flanking around right here mine going down interesting mine positioning something to keep in mind another thing when you're watching replays not only looking at builds but looking at the small parts this wire for instance this mine positioning mine positioning very very key early game for Wehrmacht especially with this build just because you're fairly underpowered in terms of your tier one tier one strength and you really need to make the sniper worth as much as possible so going to keep the game going right now Siwu using his sniper around the mine very smart move by him keeping on harassing something to keep in mind always harass with your sniper this is a a slightly risky time right now however he does know he has that mine and that mine going to keep him fairly safe going to retreat out of there in time good job Volks over here and right around here we see another vulnerability fourth rifle squad on the field the Volks reinforcing back here means the MG was delayed and as you can see lots of rifles coming from every which way and this MG as we're going to see in a second yep gonna be forced to retreat again we're going to ignore the fact that I have done a terrible job capping the right hand side and look back to Wu's base we do see right now are there bars nope no bars on the field for the American player and we see a Ah, sorry. We see a or or we see tier two tech being being gone too. So no bars. Go tier two as soon as possible after the MG. Fairly standard for this build, but just something to keep in mind. And looking at what Wu sees, Wu sees nothing in the base, so he does not know that there is in fact nothing to see in the base. But not knowing there is nothing to see is far less advantageous to knowing there's nothing to see. Of course, uh, scouting in Company of Heroes is fairly difficult. I mean, there is no bike in this build, and although scouting on longer are a little bit easier, without a bike, it's kind of difficult for Vermark to scout, so we're going to ignore that and just see no bars, so assume motor pool tech to tier 2. Another one of those small things you're going to want to keep in mind, and bars popping right now. Let's see. Tier 2 already finished and a Krieg Barracks already on the way. Now we're going to see if Wu decides to cancel this Krieg Barracks. This is something you really want to pay attention to is when e the opponent's tech is revealed, what is the player going to do? In this case, we are going to have to see, plan through it a little bit more. And it looks like he is going to pause it right now it looks like he is going to be keeping with tier 2 tech there are two options in this situation there's either go tier 2 and get a gren out or there is cancel the tier 2 get another mg and then build tier 2 once you have the resources woo in this case electing for the tier 2 and we'll have to see what it does for his fighting force right now and what it does for him in the future because right now he's going to be at a slight disadvantage he's going to have three fighting tier one units and one harassing tier one unit the harassing tier one unit of course being the sniper against four very very powerful tier one units in barred rifles and one engineer so going through just seeing how he handles this focusing down the flamer 
which is a fairly heavy blow. And you see right now he forces a retreat. And this is going to make his tier 2 tech completely safe. So right there, something you could take from that is if I'm confident I'm going to be able to force his first bar assault off, I am going to keep my tier 2 up and get a medic bunker. You see he put that medic bunker down the moment he forced me or forced the American player in this case off the map and so yeah that is that is Wu's Wu's decision to counter counter the bars before the tier 2 before his tier 2 Krieg Barracks gets on the field is to just get a medic bunker and play completely passively force the American player to play into his hands and that's just something you're going to want to keep in mind when when either adopting this build or adopting parts of this build you see another pretty heavy retreat so that's just in this case good uh, good micro and now we have a kind of interesting situation we do see extremely dominant map control on Wu's part and at this at this time in the game I would personally say the game is pretty much over there's not too too much that can be gleaned from from taking a look at Wu's actions throughout the rest of this match. We are, we are just going to speed through them and see if there's anything anything interesting or important to note. Moving MGs, moving sniper, always keeping his sniper fairly far back. Where is the sniper? Yep, sniper always behind his frontline infantry. Wiring up, wiring up, very very important. Grenade going in. Very, very standard play. He is ahead. He knows he knows he has the advantage right now. And there's really not much to be gleaned from the rest of the match. Just a little bit of a summary on what what I personally took from watching this game. The opening build order, sending the pioneers to the right hand side. Advantage, you secure the right hand side fairly solid. The disadvantage, you do not secure the left-hand side. How you make up for that is, of course, just sending a Pioneer over when the American player is focused on pushing off the right-hand side because by pushing so hard on the right-hand side and capping almost all the way to his base, you are encouraging him to push on the right-hand side because if he does not push, he is going to be at a serious disadvantage because you are going to just have extremely dominant map positioning and map control, resource control, all that fun stuff. And a flamer goes down, oh no. But the second the second little thing to note, the Krieg Barracks positioning did not really see it because there weren't many very frantic and hectic little skirmishes on the right hand side. However, if you are planning on capping a lot on the right hand side with your pioneers I mean good idea put the bear marked quarters on the right hand side so another thing to note strafing run did absolutely nothing and sending the Volks to the right hand side sending them all the way up to to capture and push off the rifle squad another important thing so so a little bit in review Pay attention to what your opponent is doing that is different from what you would be doing and try to take take some things from that. We are going to go on to the second game between me and Wu. This is going to be Wu playing Americans against my Wehrmacht. Load it up right there. And in this game, I'm just going to be doing the exact same thing. I know what I like to do early game as Americans, and I'm just going to pay attention to what Wu does differently and how Wu excels where I fall short in certain aspects of my early game. And these these replays really focusing a lot on the early game. It's a lot more difficult to pick up things in a replay that aren't solid micro little aspects in later game. Replays really a lot about early game and transitioning out of the early game into the mid game. Switching over to Wu, we're going to see the typical barracks placement right there, so nothing special. We're going to speed this up, get to something interesting. Engineer going to go out, going to see where the engineer goes to cap. 
Looking like it's going to be this munitions point fairly standard. And now here's something right away that's interesting. Instead of sending one of his engineers to this fuel point right here, which is something I like to do, he is going to send one right here to this strap point. And we're, and we're going to see how this affects his, his immediately later decision making, how it affects his early game in terms of where he decides to push. And... Oh, excuse me. And just how he decides to approach the game after this. As you see, not electing to push up to this munitions point, instead going to the far safer munitions point on the left hand side. This could of course just be a map specific thing, but now we do see the first rifle squad on the field and in my comfortable in the way I find it most comfortable to play Americans is cap this strap point with my rifles and then move up here and cap this this VP with my rifles as well. Now we're going to see a completely different style of play from Wu and it's just something that I'm going to keep in mind, something that I'm going to tell myself, hey, I'm going to want to try this because because what he gets out of it seems a lot more than what I get out of my my little cap. Now, notice Wu pushing up, pushes off this right um Pioneer Squad, and what he did right here, I don't think I actually caught it on the video, hopefully I did, was I had almost capped, or the Wehrmacht player rather, had almost capped this fuel point fully. Wu knew he was not going to be able to cap it back with his rifle squad, and he really didn't want to because the Volk squad was on the way, and that would have been a losing battle, Volks and Pioneer against his rifle squad. So what he did was he tapped a cap on the fuel point, and what this did was it reset the the counter to zero because if you go away from a strap point and then recap it a few seconds later there's still going to be some cap on there unless the opponent has tried to cap it in the meantime which is what Wu did right there and what it does is really delays the Wehrmacht players cap on that if he does manage to push off this rifle squad so with that little point out of the way we're going to look at what exactly did sending this rifle squad all the way down here do for Wu's early game. Now if we look he has been capping the left hand side he doesn't have this fuel point which is which is okay I mean that's an extra five fuel but he does cap this plus ten and the fuel on longer fairly easy to hold early game so that's not too big a deal. He is capping fairly well on the left hand side he still has this strap point so he's connected with this fuel and he had pushed off the Pioneer down here, which means it's going to be very, very difficult for the Wehrmacht player to secure a foothold on the right-hand side unless he really, really pushes for it early in the game. And as you notice, the Wehrmacht player in this case did not push for it. A lot of Wehrmacht players do not do what Wu did and do not elect to send both of their Pioneers to the right-hand side. And Wu's little build right here is designed to punish that style of play and we're going to see how he follows it up you see he's still capping the right hand side with his engineers going to throw almost heads towards the building knows the building is is a little bit of a safe haven if the Wehrmacht player decides to be aggressive and push up now uh, we're going to cap this munitions point sending his second rifle right now going to pause sending the second rifle to the left hand side going to push off this pioneer and what Wu is doing and, s and what you as the replay viewer in this case want to be paying attention to is, is the benefits, is the pros and cons of, of what Wu does relative to what you do. So in my case, I like to send that first engineer a bit quicker onto the left hand side and neglect to cap this point and, and just kind of cap this with the rifle squad and then push up gradually. What that does is if my opponent is a little bit late or if my opponent decides to push for the right hand side, I am able to cap this and then either move over here or move over here depending on what my opponent has decided to do. In Wu's case, he says, hey, I'm going to take the offensive right off the bat. I'm going to push off this pioneer squad. I'm going to completely force my opponent to adapt to my play instead of adapting to my opponent's play, which is what my previous notion of how I like to play this map is. And and as you can see from the left-hand side, he loses almost nothing 
from sending that engineer to cap this point and then cap this point instead of capping this fuel point. He loses the plus five fuel per minute, which in the early game is fairly in... in eh, but it's not that big a deal is what I'm trying to say, especially because by pushing so hard on the right-hand side, you force your Wehrmacht opponent to react in kind and push very, very hard on the right-hand side. Of course, without the the map control and the resource control as you can see the complete difference from the previous game to this one we are both doing fairly similar build orders as you can see the, Ver the Wehrmacht player is going to be going to Volk Sniper MG just like we did in the previous game however he did not elect to push extremely hard on the right hand side and as you can see from that the Wehrmacht player does not have a lot on the right hand side and the American player with his early aggression with that early rifle squad really able to push up the right hand side I'm gonna keep this this game going and this rifle squad going over going to intercept this pioneer and actually going to kill it because I'm bad and just kinda of backing off Enemy unit. and let's see once the third run, rifle run, hits run, run, third rifle hits going to turn the fog of war off and we're going to see this is about the same situation we had in the previous game the sniper actually a little bit less complete a little bit of a I don't know misstep on my part but sniper about halfway complete and Wu is three rifles against two Volks and a couple of pioneers and we're going to see what does he do in this situation as you saw in the previous game the American player did push up a little bit, but did not cap, and not capping is really what hurt him because the mobility of the Wehrmacht player's opening allowed him to re reapply his aggression very, very quickly. So we're going to see how Wu reacts to this. This is something that I personally, watching this replay, am very, very interested in. What is Wu going to do to press this one tier one unit advantage that he has so early? You see the Wehrmacht player focusing on the right-hand side, and Wu, at this point, really electing not to push too, too far. Sniper on the field right now, so Wu does know what is going on. Instead, sending a rifle squad into the back and sending an engineer around as well. going to pause right now and see he did lose his fuel. He did lose this fuel. He does have this fuel as well, so it's not too big of a deal. He's going to probably be able to recap this fuel fairly quickly just because it is so close to his base. Fourth rifle squad on the field and the MG on the way. So once again, a four rifle squad against two Volks and a sniper scenario. Going to see how Wu, how Wu kind of reacts to this, how he decides to either press his advantage or play passively. That is something we want to pay attention to. Small things, very, very important in the early game when watching a replay. And Sniper revealing itself, going to try to run after it, just keeping the Sniper right now away from the front lines. And this is very, 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 very important. Wu knows if he lets the Sniper do a lot of damage, the Sniper is going to pay for itself very quickly and is going to be very annoying. So what he tries to do there and what he for the most part succeeded in was pushing the sniper back something to keep in mind as the American player watching this replay looking for tips fighting against say the two Volks one sniper one MG opening or even just fighting against early snipers in general delaying 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 and that is something Wu is doing extremely well at this point in the game I'm gonna keep the replay going right now Retreating, probably going to cancel that mine unless he plans on building it later. And just little micro things. See the the nice flank with the two riflemen. Going to send this one back right now. He will win in a long range engagement against this squad. So very, very smart play. Once again, backing up when the sniper shoots. Delay, delay, delay. And he is getting a supply art. Now, against this opening, there are Really, and against any any Wehrmacht opening, there are three things an American player can do. They can either go fast bars, which is very popular this patch. They can go fast weapon support center, which is usually after three rifles instead of four. Or they can go fast motor pool. Wu, in this case, electing 
to go for the fast motor pool. Now, keeping in mind what Wu knows, if we're going to put the fog of war on right now, Wu sees tier 2. Wu did see that tier 2 from a flanking rifle squad, or probably from this rifle squad. So Wu knows tier 2 is on the way and is still getting the supply yard. Now it's going to be interesting to see, is he going to go for a motor pool right away? Or is he just going to get the supply yard up? As you see from his resources, he's fairly close to bars. He could get the supply yard up right now and still pop bars within the next minute and a half. He does know tier 2 is up, so he knows tier 3 is far less of a risk. But he already had the supply yard almost fully completed when he saw this tier 2. So... Something to keep in mind is when players cancel tech, when players decide to complete tech, and when players adapt and don't adapt to their opponent's play, you do see a motor pool is in fact being built. So Wu, interestingly enough, fairly confident in his ability to out-micro a pack and out-micro what the Wehrmacht player has on the field right now. Now, it is important to note that any early sniper opening from Wehrmacht does, does run the risk of losing to very, very fast M8 play. The reason for this being snipers do absolutely nothing against, of course, the fast M8. You need that MG as well, which means you only have two Volks on the field. And your Tier 2 is most likely delayed because you elected to go for that super, super fast sniper, which is a very, very heavy manpower investment. So fast M8 can be fairly vulnerable to that. However, another thing to keep in mind is the pack, which is going to be coming onto the field very, very soon. And, and what you are going to want to pay attention to right now, we'll get back to the pack situation in a second, Looking at this flank right here, this is, I'd say, the turning point in this game. And look how just, if you were paying attention to the tactical map, I mean to the mini map, I was not very much, I'm sorry. But just pay attention how he is coming around this flank. You see the flanks in the previous game, the American player only coming from two, sometimes three angles. And really, really wasn't able to push off the Wehrmacht player's forces. Now in this case, Wehrmacht player split up. The American player knew, Wu did know, that the Wehrmacht player had forced, or he had forced the Wehrmacht player to retreat one of his Volk squads and the Pine and the sniper is not on the field as we will see if I can find the sniper. Where's the sniper? Sniper! Actually the sniper is on the field but the sniper's in a, a ridiculously terrible position. So there we go, two tier 1 units and a sniper against four rifles all coming at pretty much the same time. And look at this, all coming from different angles. There is literally zero possibility of a single MG burst, a single MG positioning, catching more than one of these rifle squads. And as a result, we can see right here, force retreat, and going to be completely able to cap the entirety of the map, killing the sniper, and at this point, kind of like at the point in the previous game, this game is, is I'd say, pretty much over. Now I am going to keep it running because I want to show you an, a, a little interesting thing that Wu does to counter this pack, and is an, another something because I know personally I find myself getting into the trap of getting getting infantry company when I play Americans pr pretty much right when I get my first CP and spamming mines. Now that is excellent against certain styles of play. That's excellent against very aggressive Wehrmacht play. Excellent against tier 3. And excellent against anyone who doesn't go for... I mean, excellent if me as the American player am not deciding to go for vehicles and, in, and am instead focusing heavily on infantry in the early game. However, we do see right now Wu going for the M8. He knows Tier 2 is up, so he knows there's most likely going to be a pack on the field. And given his map control, he knows generally where it is going to be, which is in this area right around here. Now, 
you do see Airborne on the field and Recon Run is up and we're going to see in a very very short time right now bam recon run right on the pack right on you see he sent it right down this line right here this is exactly where the the Wehrmacht player is going to have his pack somewhere in this area so that's something to keep in mind as an American player watching this replay how is he positioning his doctrinal abilities what doctrine did he go and why did he go it in this case he had he has the overwhelming advantage. He knows at most I will have one pack, maybe a pack and a Shrek Grand on the field. He now knows exactly what the American player does have on the field. He knows where the pack is and he will not run into it. And from there, not really much else to say on that. I mean, very, very smart play, something you can always incorporate into your own play knowing if you have the supreme advantage going fast m8 and then recon running can be extremely extremely powerful of course that is that is really really all i got for these these two replays just to summarize what what i hope you guys really get out of this video is just the importance of Knowing, going into watching a replay, what your preferences are, what your style is, what you think you would do in certain situations, and comparing that against what the very, very good player, what the expert player in the replay you're watching decides to do and decides to do differently or similarly in similar situations. You do see right there two situations where... The, the player I'm watching, his opponent is doing openings very similar to what I like to do and how he is adapting and changing his play style, changing, changing his builds, changing her, his early game, early game aggression, early game tactics, and early game capping order differently. And, and just taking, taking certain aspects of that and trying to incorporate it into your own play. Hopefully this will help you guys out watching your own replays watching other players replays of course watching your own replays i will i will be posting up a video about critiquing your own play style and and what to look for and what to kind of ignore in a couple of days tomorrow i will be throwing up another cast and that's all i got for today hope that helped thank you for watching